Welcome everybody. I'm going to use this extended studio format, the green box behind me and some equipment in this room to guide you through a couple of tutorials this semester that introduce you to functions on the digital video camera and to functions in video editing and compositing software in the Adobe CS suite. For today, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the digital video camera. Here we already see the camera set up. I'm using my own model. It's a Sony 3CCD HDR FX1 camera. And uh, you also see on the screen the little numbers and signs and letters that explain a little bit the settings for the different functions that I'm going to explain to you. I would like to start with a very basic function of this video camera, which is the focus. The focus wheel for this camera is right around the lens here in the front and I can very easily get my image out of focus and then back into focus. Not very many cameras have this function still today. In fact, some of the prosumer cameras that we have in class will only have a touch screen that allows you to focus the image by touching on an area of the screen that you would like to have in focus. With this camera, I can use an expanded focus function that allows me to fine tune my focusing to an area that is in the center of my image, just like that. Again, not very many cameras have this function, but you can use a different trick, which is to zoom in to the center of the screen using the zoom buttons on your camera, focus on that part of the image, and then zoom out again and you will have the whole image range in focus at this point. Of course, you can also use the autofocus that I can engage on the side of the camera here, switching from manual to auto. You see the little hand icon disappearing on the screen and then everything will be automatically in focus. However, the problem with this function is that very often if there are fast moving objects in front of the camera, the camera might be tricked into focusing on a different part of the image, thus resulting in some uh, blurry bursts in your image from time to time. I would recommend to keep for steady focus your whole scene constantly in manual focus and setting that manual focus in the beginning of your uh, shooting session. I've also already quickly talked about the zoom function on the camera. In fact, this camera has a couple of different zoom options. I will just focus on the uh, zoom buttons that are on the camera because these are the functions that you will find on your cameras that you can check out for this semester as well. The zoom buttons uh, have a tele and uh, a wide angle function abbreviated with T. I'm pushing on the T button right now, which allows me to zoom in and the W button for a wide angle shot that will demonstrate in a second as well. These buttons are touch sensitive, so depending on how fast I push them and how hard I push them, uh, the zoom will change accordingly. I can zoom out very, very slowly like this. And I can zoom in very fast if I like, like that, just by changing the pressure on the zoom buttons on the camera. This is something you can try out easily with the cameras that you can check out for this class yourself. And uh, it usually takes a little bit of practice to get just the right speed, or especially if you want to change the speed while you're zooming in or zooming out. Let's talk about uh, a couple of more advanced features on video cameras um, that you will find on some of the cameras that you can check out this semester. The first one I would like to demonstrate is the uh, aperture, or sometimes also called iris function on the video camera. Uh, I have a little button that engages or disengages this function, setting it to uh, a manual iris, manual aperture, or an automatic aperture as well. Right now I'm in the uh, manual aperture, and you can see this little, down here, this little number, the f-stop number, which is at 1.7 right now. If I change this and I have a little dial at the uh, bottom of my camera, I can increase this number 
and what that will do is it basically closes the iris or it closes the aperture so that less light can fall onto the image recording chip. You see that the image will get darker, less light is falling on the image recording chip and I can balance this by decreasing the shutter speed which you'll actually see down here, this number 350, that I can uh, decrease at the same time. Uh, this will allow a shutter that is rapidly opening and closing in front of your lens to do that slower if I decrease this number, allowing more light to fall through the shutter onto the iris, through the iris onto the image recording chip, or to make it go faster, opening and closing faster by increasing this number. So the number that we're looking at is right down here. You will see that if I increase this quite a bit, I'll decrease this number respectively to 30, 15, or even 8, and start to move, movements will start to appear quite blurry actually. If I have a very high shutter speed, uh, images will appear very sharp and very clear. This is important if you want to record uh, movements with fast action, fast movements, uh, and will have them uh, very well defined on your video camera. Let me increase this to the highest maximum f-stop for the aperture here, which is 11 on this camera. Some cameras go all the way up to 16, and then balance this with um, my shutter speed as well, which is set to 30. So 30 times the shutter will open and close per second right now. There's an interesting relationship between the iris and uh, the, uh, the focus function on the camera which allows you to set a certain kind of depth of field. And so we can try this out actually quickly. Um, if I set my aperture to a very low f-stop, let's go back to 1.7 for example, increase the light that falls onto the image recording chip, so I need to also increase my shutter speed again, setting that to 500 roughly. I can now have different parts of my image in focus. So let's take, for example, this little element here. And you will see that now this is very well focused in the foreground, but I'm kind of blurry in the background. If I switch that focus, I can put myself much better in focus and I'll have that little uh, plastic piece in the foreground uh, not so much in focus anymore. It's actually quite blurred right now. So let's try this again. I can put my focus on this little plastic piece in the foreground and that will make me quite blurry in the background. I can shift that focus to myself in the background and that will make the little plastic piece in the foreground quite blurry. Here to there, here to there. Some people call this rack focus, some other people also define this as depth of field. This is a quite an interesting effect that you can achieve with any kind of uh, camera from photographic cameras to video recording cameras and lots of artists have actually used that already in their projects as we can see in some of the examples in class. Let's continue with the white balance function on the video camera. I have already balanced uh, this camera to the light temperature in this room beforehand, before starting the recording, but I would like to show you, I would just like to go back into my focus settings here for a second and focus again on the screen. I would like to show you how you can set the white balance on a camera. There are a couple of predefined settings if I engage those, I can go into a setting like this, which is for um, indoor candescent lights. So we see this little icon down here, which is the light bulb that uh, represents this kind of setting. I can also go into my program menu and then go into my white balance presets and change that from indoor to outdoor. And you can already see, especially in the green behind me, um, the change in color temperature and the change in the representation of colors. I can switch back to my 
previous setting that I already set for this room and then switch back to the outdoor settings. How would you set manually the white balance without relying on predefined white balance settings in your camera? It is actually very simple and I have the only device here that you will actually need for that which is a white sheet of paper. What you would do is you would hold it in front of the lens of your camera like this and then you push the white balance adjustment button on your camera. You see there's this little icon down here which is my preset A. If I push this button it will start to jump and when it stops jumping it has actually adjusted the light temperature to my white sheet of paper. This is quite interesting because you can trick the white balance settings with different colors. So what happens if I tell the camera this orange piece of paper is white? Let's try this out. I will set the white balance to orange. Right now orange appears to be white. If I take this off, the colors are really quite uh, dark and quite cold in comparison to the first setting. Now I have a blue sheet of paper that I can use as my white balance reference sheet. I will set the white balance to blue and now if I take this off things will look actually rather uh, warm and almost a little bit orange especially if you look at my skin tones or uh, the yellow component of the uh, green color in the background. Let's wrap up this workshop with just a few more functions on the camera. Um, we have for example the uh, gain. Some cameras have this. The gain just temporarily boosts the exposure of your camera image. This is a gain of zero decibels, as you can see right down here. And I can set this to a medium setting of nine decibel. You see how visibly the image gets brighter and then to the highest setting, which is 18 decibels, where some parts now, especially my face, are getting uh, overexposed. These were just a few of the camera's functions that I wanted to show you guys today that are meant to accompany the experiments and workshops that we're doing in class. Please take out uh, your own video camera, either equipment that you own already, maybe a digital SLR photo camera that can record video, or some of the cameras that we have in class and experiment with some of these functions to come up with ideas how you can creatively use one function or a combination of functions of the digital video camera to tell a story, to create meaning, or to find a creative way to express a concept. I hope you enjoyed this workshop and I will be back with the next workshop in a week from now.